Oh yes, I'm Matt Gordon. Oh, if you'll show the first photo, that's me. See my big smile right there? That could be you. Could be you if you decide to do it. Seems there are a lot of people here thinking about doing the same thing, which is fantastic. I'm not going to get too much into why I decided to do it myself. I mean, you're all here already. You probably already have your own reasons. But if you go to the next photo, I will answer one question, which is the question I get asked the most, which is what the best part of the trail was. I get that one all the time. I mean, I can name a few great sections of the trail. You might have heard them before. Richmond Ranges, Goat Pass, Waiau Pass were my South Island highlights. They were my favourites because they were some of the most remote and stunning locations I've ever been to. And they were also some of the more challenging sections. This here is Lake Constance at the, or the top of the YL Pass, which is just sort of here. This is the obligatory photo that is compulsory to take and post on Instagram. Every single person has done it and you have to do it. It's in the rules. <laughs> And you know, despite living in New Zealand for 33 out of 40 years, I had never really been to the South Island. I don't think I'd ever been further than Nelson. So this was a great way to see it. You know, and I know there are easier ways, but this was the way I chose. Actually, I went to a pub quiz on Tuesday, just two days ago, and one of the questions was, which of these three towns in the South Island is furthest north? Methven, Reefton, or... Twizel, and I knew the answer. And so even now, I am finding new ways that this trail has benefited my life. <laughs> uh, it's pretty happy to get at least one right in this quiz. Otherwise I did appalling. Let me show the next one. Oh, the answer was Reefton, by the way. <laughs> uh, so my North Island highlights were the Tongariro Crossing because everyone raves about it and I just never got around to doing it before. And Another great bit is the Pukiti Forest, Cowrie and Riverwalk, which is just north of Kerry Kerry. This is it. This is part of it. It's not quite as scenic as the last one, but this is the first time I'd ever walked down a river for a long time. I think it lasts for a few hours and it's so beautiful when you're there and you're so remote. It's just great. I mean, actually, honestly, I loved all of the North Island. I was actually born in the Waikato, spent half my life in the Waikato. And I've lived in Wellington and Auckland as well. So it was really nice to see all the places that I have spent time growing up, but from a different angle, or many different angles, angles that you know, most people won't actually get to see. I felt quite, quite privileged to see this is how I felt when I was there. But I've actually said to myself many times that the day I enjoyed the most on the trail was the very first day mainly because it was, what did I say about it on here? <laughs> <laughs> it was just so exciting and scary. I had been thinking about doing the trail for a whole year and I was finally on it. And when I was dropped off at Cape Reinga and then the car drove away and suddenly I was there all on my own, nothing but my bag, no one else around, I will remember that feeling forever. It was terrifying. <laughs> but. <sighs> But in saying that, it was also really good. Like while I was, well, once the trail was over, I thought to myself, I wish I could wipe my memory of the whole trail just so I could experience that first day again because it was so intense. Now Spencer mentioned that I should try and think of five things I wish I'd known before I started. But what actually happened was I'm one of those people that spent so much time researching every single blog, every single thing that past people had written that I knew exactly what was going to happen. And so there wasn't actually a lot that surprised me and not a lot I would have done different. I mean, some people out there have written some really good stuff that helped me a lot and I'm glad I read it all. Let me switch forward. So it inspired me to write my own. And here it is, any chance to plug it. That's the... <laughs> That's the address there, but I can give it to anyone that wants it afterwards as well. I spent at least an hour every single day writing up a page, took hundreds of photos, and people laughed at me because I just took photos of everything, like car parks and all sorts of things. 
But so I, I filtered a lot of them out, wrote it all, put it all on here. It didn't even feel like work actually. On days when I was camping on my own, there's a lot of those in the North Island, it gave me something to do once the sun went down. And so I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have something to write about. Uh, if, if you feel like you want to read about every single minute detail of my experience on the trail, it's on there. If, if you Google, I think Matt's TA blog, I think it comes up as well. And actually, it got surprisingly popular. Like people that I didn't expect to hear about it heard about it. I remember a German guy came up to me on the street in Paihia. He sort of came running up the street and said, you're mad, you have the blog, you're famous. <laughs> and I felt like a celebrity, it was great. <laughs> I got, that happened, not quite like that, but it happened a few times over the hike. Ralph was the most excited. <laughs> but even though I had done so much preparation and knew what to expect most of the time, doesn't mean to say the walk wasn't memorable or surprising. It just meant that the things that were the most memorable were not the things I expected to be when I started. Like, I didn't expect to meet such a large number of cool people. I walked together with the same group of four guys that I met in Tikawiti all the way from there to Wellington, which meant that we did the Whanganui River section together. Hopefully it's not a surprise that there's a river section. You, sp you spend five days on a canoe or a kayak and yeah, well, that was, an, <laughs> that was a memorable bit. The fact that the hire companies will hire out canoes and kayaks to people who clearly don't know what they were doing. <laughs> I, I think at least half the group had never actually even been in a canoe before, it's including me. I actually, that was the first time that I learned that a, a canoe oar actually only has one bit on the end. It's not like a, <laughs> it's, it's not like a kayak. So I didn't even know that. It was, how we got away with it, I've got no idea. We, I was actually in a kayak for most of the time because I had been in a kayak and, so you've got the option. It's, <laughs> so another one of the more, more memorable things was, then I, was when I was having breakfast in a cafe in Whanganui after the river section. I noticed a lot of people in the cafe wearing really crisp blue suits. And I thought, what are these people doing here? This is Whanganui, this is not what I expected. And they all look very important. And as I was sitting and thinking about it, I thought, who would have this kind of entourage? There's only one person in New Zealand who has this kind of entourage, the Prime Minister. So I looked around, <laughs> <laughs> I looked around to see if she was in the cafe. And there she was, yep. <laughs> Despite the fact she was clearly having a meeting with her staff, I had no problem interrupting. I just <laughs> wandered over there. I said, oh, excuse me. <laughs> I think given that I looked like that, kind of, it's, uh, kind of presentable. I think she knew I was up to something. I had my big pack with me out of the picture. She was very nice about it. We talked about Te Araroa and what I was doing. She kindly did not mention the fact that I smelled like the Whanganui River. <laughs> I'd just literally come off it after five days, hadn't showered. <laughs> now, it's a shame. I, I like that photo. I had any chance to show off that photo. The lighting is not the best, but given that her staff was sitting there giving me the e most evil eyes I'd ever seen, I was not going to ask for a second photo. They, they look really annoyed. Now, Obviously, I can't guarantee you'll meet Jacinda or anyone else famous, <laughs> but I can guarantee you will meet lots of cool people and lots of other things that will happen that you'll remember for the rest of your life. One more memorable thing that happened in 2020, you might have heard of it. COVID-19 became a big event as I got further and further down the country. And I actually had to abandon the walk when I got to Queenstown on the 23rd of March, which you might remember as the day that we went, uh, Jacinda announced level four. I just happened to be near a major airport during that announcement. I was inside the pack and save in Queenstown, which is actually adjacent to the airport. I was very, very lucky. I didn't have to spend lockdown in a tent for six weeks. I mean, I know I'd just been in a tent for five months, but that would have been very boring. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Now, while of course COVID-19 is unpleasant, even that made my walk memorable 
And it's all the different memories, good and bad, that I cherish. Now, I, didn't do the la I did do the last 10% of the walk this year from Queenstown to Bluff. Did it in March. So, finished in March. Uh, despite the year's break in between, arriving at Bluff was very overwhelming. I really thought taking a year off would dampen it and I would get there and be like, oh, okay, now what? But no, I, I was very emotional. There was a lot of crying. I was in such a state that someone came up to me and comforted me. <laughs> <laughs> Although in fairness, it was the guy who had just arrived in Bluff having cycled all of New Zealand. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, a, it's a popular spot for that kind of thing. So he knew what I was going through, kind of. <laughs> even, even in March this year, I met a girl in a hut called Nicola towards the end. She said, you're Matt, aren't you? You wrote the blog last year. So still getting recognized. There's one more photo. Yep, rather unassuming campsite there. And I realize I haven't actually talked much about the actual walking itself. But I thought the aim of this session was to inspire you guys to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to rave about the cool things that happen on the walk and the memories rather than the actual walking. And besides, you wouldn't be here if walking 3,000 kilometers wasn't something you'd at least considered. Of course, you're walking between 6 and 12 hours most days. It's no mean feat walking such a long distance. But I'm sure you've already thought hard about that. And getting up each day, walking for most of the day, and then eating and sleeping becomes your whole life. You know, nothing else really matters, though. You've always got a tent with you, and you're never that far from food, so there's not really much to stress about. It's nice not to have a lot of the stresses of day-to-day -day city life hanging over you, like the Gillies Ave traffic, for instance, <laughs> which I battle every day on the way to work. No, no meetings, no deadlines, no noise. Assuming you don't go at some weird time of year, like I know there are people that walk in the winter, there will always be others around to talk to, if you want, or if you don't want to. You can just go camp out in the wilderness. It's great, you know, so many options. Oh, I'm missing something, oh no. Going over time a bit. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, the sheer variety is another good thing of places you go through. Some of the American trails, I think, are all forests and all mountains. Here you've got beach and the forest. You've got farms, rivers, roads, cities, mountain sections, the river section, some big plains in the South Island. It's really great. And some of it was tough. Some of it wasn't, but it was never boring. One thing I will say, and I wish I'd done differently, there is one thing that carrying all the stuff is hard. I would take a pack that had more support. That is one thing I would do differently because you've got a lot of stuff to lug around with you. And saying that, I hope none of you think that the TA is too much to handle. This photo is the end of day one. This is Twilight Campsite. This here is the first moment in my entire life I ever camped overnight on my own. It really is. The TA was the first multi-day hike I've ever done solo. <laughs> the first time I've ever camped on my own without my friends or car nearby. And people at work said, we well, should do something smaller to start with. <laughs> do some smaller hikes for practice. Well, and I thought, why not just throw myself in the deep end? Start with the longest hike possible. I mean, if at any point I decided it was too hard, I could just stop. You know, there's no reason why not. My initial goal when I started was simply make it back to Auckland. Once I got back to Auckland, my next goal was to make it to Tikuiti. Then my next goal was Wellington in the South Island. Breaking it down into smaller goals made it seem more manageable. And nobody will think you failed if you don't end up walking the whole thing. I mean, you've done more than most people are going to do. Like Spencer said, those of you who parked on Kimberley Road have already done some of the trail today. So well done. You've started. <laughs> So don't think you can't do it. Assuming most of you live in New Zealand, you have the luxury of just doing bits of it if you want. Although, of course, I'm going to recommend walking the whole thing if you can. There's nothing quite like it. You'll probably get injured along the way. 
When I got to Wai the Waipu Cove campground after three weeks, there were 11 of us there, and we you always do a little survey, and we talked to everyone, and only two people out of 11 didn't have some kind of injury. So it's going to happen. Just take your time and rest when you need to, and you'll be fine. I made it from Waipu Cove all the way to halfway down the South Island before I hurt myself again. So it's, it's all right. I've got one more thing to say. Getting up in front of a group of people like this and talking about it is much scarier for me <laughs> than anything that actually happened on the trail. So if I can do this, you can do that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>